Welcome to the Revenge of the live stream. Sorry to any folks who were there and got cut off. Something happened with my webcam, so we're just using the computer webcam this time. Now, for any viewers who do pop by this in the future or return here in a minute, I am still going to check in on some dirt and compost and isopods. Now, the last stream, I suppose, was our clock glass portion, although we didn't get too far on collecting glass, but we still just need to take a dirt break because we might as well treat the second stream like a new sequel. Clock Fire 2, Revenge of the Isopods. Now, let's take a peek on if there are any in the corner. But first, actually, let's take a visit by the plant that's already growing here. So what plants do we have in the combo class? Well, we got a clock tree right there, right behind me. There's a, there's a nice clock tree. And we got right there another clock tree. Those are some pretty nice trees. However, the nicest is this staghorn fern. This guy that's growing on the wall and has just been growing on the wall the whole time I've lived here. Now that thing is wild. I don't know where it gets its nutrients. It just lives there. I'm gonna try misting it with a mister to like make it fresher, but without doing anything, this thing just thrives, makes new green stuff every year, and isn't connected to soil. It's like a self-sustaining ecosystem, practically, with just a little bit of rain. Crazy. Now, if the staghorn fern is so incredible, sorry for the weird light, we need to make some more incredible plants here that have edible traits about them. So, what do we have here? We have a bin of dirt. Now, yesterday... As I was doing my snack break, and part of it involved preparing for future snacks, I put a bunch of worms and isopods in here because they were hanging out in the compost. And now I want to gently dig around a little bit and see if there are any of those worms or isopods still hanging out. Because last time they kind of vanished in a weird way. Now, I wonder if they're just going to hang out if I put some plants in or if they just wandered back to the compost somehow because they didn't like it in here. But in any case, the compost will help the soil, but if we get some worms in here, it seems like that would be even more helpful. So let's just do a little meditative dig for a second and see if we can unearth any little of the three creatures we might encounter, which would be a worm, an isopod, or some sort of little black beetle that there also was. Any compost experts know where the worms and isopods go if you put them in soil? Because they are vanished. I don't see one worm or one isopod. There were dozens of them. All right, so maybe we'll add some more compost, but I don't know where all the critters are going. So in any case, we can't plant our stuff in here quite yet. Because when I read online what you're supposed to do with sprouted potatoes and onions and stuff, they say let them sprout a little longer, then put them in the soil. Then we're going to get some magnificent green stuff coming out. Now, we could take a field trip in a minute if anyone requests to gather more compost. But I am curious where they all went. I'm going to have to do some research. Now, this little thing looks like it could maybe be an egg of something. That could possibly, that little thing right there. Well, ah, that little thing could maybe be an egg of something. So maybe a new one will hatch, but where will all of its friends have been? In fact, I see a lot of these. I can't tell if these are part of some compost thing or if this is an egg, but this looks like it definitely could be a little egg of something. I wonder if that's what the isopods come out of. Now, maybe we... Oh, whoa, I see one. It appeared. Where was it? They hide in weird ways. But one appeared. There's an isopod. Now, it may look dead, but it's not dead. It's just chilling. Now... Let's just let him hang out there a little bit, see if he does anything. And I'll just keep him on my hand and keep you notified if he ends up deciding to take a little walk. So there was an isopod, at least. Are the rest of them just really good at playing hide-and-seek? 
another appeared. Maybe they're somehow just doing their, or no, that was the same one maybe. Maybe they're just really good at doing their hide and seek type thing. But there's one. All right, fella, you want to go back in the dirt? So, at least one isopod was still hanging out, and that's making me suspect that there's a bunch of them, and they were just hanging out in weird places. Here's a little one. Well, actually, a medium one. I've seen really little ones. But look, the little ones are uh, lighter colored. There's a little one. I don't know if you can see them very well. Pretty cool, huh? Little miniature isopod fella. So that's interesting. When I dug up the dirt, I didn't find any. But when I, oh, what the heck is this? This is a little metal bird statue. Where did this come from? That's not supposed to be in the dirt. You can find all sorts of stuff in the dirt, but I didn't expect to find a metal bird statue. All right, well, we'll let him live right there. Um. But yeah, it's interesting. When I dug up the dirt, then they started crawling around. They were like, hmm, there's some action. Or like, hmm, my home got bumped. Um, but at first, they're like vacant. Um, there were a few more mini ones I saw crawling around here. And here's a rather large one. You can tell the difference more even by the color than by the size. Because they come in varying sizes to a degree. But the young ones are super light colored. And there's like normal aged one or older one little isopods so any of you when you were a kid called these roly polies there that was a good name for them because they're like it's not this exact type i don't think those ones were more in like drier climates and like slightly rounder shells but they're all similar and those ones were cool because you could play with them as a kid and they'd roll into little balls and their defense mechanism is forming a little ball. And wood lice is another one. And yeah, the background cops, whenever they're ringing those sirens, you can assume it's probably for one of my antics. Just kidding. Probably. Um, now, yeah, wood lice I'm pretty sure is another one. And someone's saying it looks like a cephalopod thingy. Now, um... I didn't do enough research to know this exact type, but it seems like there's a bunch of types of isopods that are these little crustacean guys with a bunch of different subfamilies, and this is one of them. So I think they're pretty neat. Tiny bugs are our friends. Remember that, unless they bite. The biting bugs are not our friends. But apart from the biters, bugs are underrated in our society. People always be hating on beetles and moths and cool stuff. So, I guess we'll take a pause from our dirt digging investigations, but we could theoretically add some more compost. I keep going on little missions to add compost. And, I mean, it will help in the long run. Once I put the potato in here, it's going to like the compost. So, if anyone wants, they can vote for compost and... Yeah, I'm seeing some more isopods in here, and they're just kind of playing dead when I dig around. And then when you don't look at them, they start crawling. Smart little guys. wonder where the worms went, though. In the compost, the worms made like this one mega worm clump, and now I don't see any mega worm clumps. So... We'll maybe come back to that in a minute, but for now, let's reassemble our little station right here where we were talking to see if there's any other facts or clarifications or cool stuff we need to go over. So, as far as our combo class schedule, which I like to do in our little assembly streams, we can expect it should be Sunday, Monday, wait, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. It will be this Saturday that we're going to get a pretty insane main channel episode about factorial permutations. And if you don't know factorials, it'll be a good intro. And if you do know factorials, you'll still like a lot of the weird alternate factorials I have in there. There's a lot of weird variation mutation versions of them. Um, and factorials surround our existence. We live in a factoriality. So... 
Factorials not only describe our existence, but they're hiding things about how all of our actions are utterly unique and out, one out of many, many permutations, depending on what you're doing throughout the day. And so we'll visit that in that episode, and then we'll see me eat a cactus on the fire next week. And why do I look like a conspiracy theorist? Because I know that the Earth's actually a cube. No, I'm kidding. Uh, conspiracy theories are funny. I might want to go into them someday. Now, the idea of a conspiracy theorist is... I'm sure there's times at history where they've been right. But usually nowadays when you encounter something that you'd classify as a conspiracy theory, it's probably not right. Um, and some of the them are a little like less funny and more like hard in the real world. And like there are political conspiracies that just subtly hurt the real world and are a little less funny to joke about. And then there are ones that are really funny to joke about that are like people who believe the moon landing was fake, people who believe the earth was flat, people who believe the earth's hollow, or people who believe that uh, there's some, even the whole thing that there's some secret organization called the Illuminati that there's a bunch of famous people in. That's very silly. Um, now, a lot of those, I'm sure I will make some bonus video mockingly debunking because it's too easy to debunk something like flat earth that it'll have to be more of a comedy video if i even talk about that so <laughs> some of those i do find utterly hilarious um it's one of my soft spots and one of my weird guilty pleasures is to watch videos of people who believe in some insane conspiracy theory um now Let's see. Someone's wondering about physics, which we will see a little bit more. And <laughs> yes, the ghost should not tempt me. I don't know what the tinfoil necessarily has to do with that. Uh, anyone want to guess what tinfoil would have to do in a snack break episode? Well, last time I busted out tin. Oh, cool. Look, look how it's reflecting the light. That's kind of cool. It's like a weird reflection off it. It's a holy piece of tinfoil. What is going on there? So um, the tin foil was in the episode because last snack break was about apples. And I showed a technique I like where you wrap fruits like apples in foil and toss them in a campfire and then take them out later and eat them. Uh, so I had a fire going yesterday for the cactus fruit. So I put one of the last yard apples in there. There were just a few more apples on a tree. So we did a little call back to the last one, tossed an apple in a fire. Uh, I did take a bite out of the apple. As we can see, I still need to clean up yesterday's episode. So this was the apple. I only took one bite because it didn't actually do the technique of fully cooking. I had to put out the fire pretty quick because it was destroying the clock and everything. So uh, the fire didn't go long enough to really cook the apple. But the bite I had was warm and nice. Um, all right. So. Let's see. Someone's new and they're exciting to, excited to see my buds. If they mean the isopod buds, then I'll gather them. If they mean something else, I don't know. If you mean my friends, I do have a very cool squad of friends that uh, some of them will probably show up uh, as rappers on some of the music I'll release, and other of them have been filming the videos, and other of them haven't been involved in combo class yet, but will probably join me on a stream or video or sometime because I do have some cool wild friends as well. And I need to think about what I'm doing for the holidays. Sometimes I throw some wild parties around this time. But I need to think about how exactly that's going to go down. Um, I don't really have anything planned for Thanksgiving. Maybe I'll do a special Thanksgiving dinner stream for anyone who also doesn't have anything to do for Thanksgiving. Um, someone wants me to do a cooking show, and that'd be really fun. I don't want to distract all of my energy toward um doing cooking stuff and that's why i just make it like every fifth episode or every 10th episode i do some cooking type stuff but i do think that i don't mean like mukbangs or like stuff like that but i do mean think that stuff about food is compelling to a large portion of people videos about food being prepared or eaten and i don't mean like a mukbang type thing where it's just like all just you're watching some weird guttural animalistic food eating but i mean like 
concepts about what you can do with food with a little bit of eating it mixed in are somehow compelling to a bunch of people because we're animals and it gives us a weird comfort where it's like we have a biological instinct that when you see food, you feel safer. And I think we're trained wrong in our brains that even when you see food on screen, it triggers this biological desire that we had as cavemen that when you see food, you're safe. And so uh, I think that for some reason related to that, cooking videos make people feel like comforted. Um, and so I definitely want to do those more. I don't want to distract all my time for, for it. And I don't know that much about cooking. So it's usually just weird experiments and in inventions and stuff. But someday it would be awesome to have like a side channel that somebody else mostly runs where they do really cool combo cooking stuff. And I just like show up for three minutes during the episode to do some weird experiment and break something and then try it. That would be awesome. So I would love, or I could do like a season of a cooking show on the bonus channel, but you know, I, if I do a weekly cooking show, it's going to be less math videos until I have a bigger team and they love cooking. And then I'll give one of them their own combo channel. They do weird cooking experiments and I can just show up on the channel sometimes. Um, so cooking's fun. I don't know that much about it, but I do it a lot. I mean, I know a lot about cooking like day to day food because I do a lot of cooking. I cook a lot of my meals, but I don't eat out much, but um I don't know much about like like the actual science behind like this is caramelization and this isn't or like I don't know the exact science behind some stuff. I like researching it. So I research it before I make a video about it. But um, I don't know. I'm kind of just messing around in the kitchen and trying stuff. But it usually works well because I do have like the basic knowledge of like how to not burn stuff when you're cooking the inside or outside of stuff, things like when you want oil or not. Some of that basic knowledge I did develop just by like cooking a lot of stuff over the years and see what worked and what 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 didn't. Um, so yeah, there's a lot. I'll definitely do some uh, snack break episodes that are going to come out uh, in either grade negative one or grade negative two. We got the cactus fire coming out next week, and that that one's just going to be pretty chaotic. It's just like starts out with like what fruits can I gather in my uh, yard now that it's fall? And so we get the last apples, we get some guavas and we get the cactus fruit. And we come back here, light a massive fire, toast it, eat it, rant about potatoes and garlic and onions for a while and to get some compost and dirt. So it's a pretty chaotic episode, but that's the next snack break. After that, some other ones I have planned that I want to do as snack breaks are one is what is a vegetable? The conspiracy of fruit versus vegetable, really unraveling that. The next is surprisingly, and these aren't in order. These are just ones I want to do. Surprisingly edible peels. Eating the peels of a bunch of things that we could be eating the peel of once in a while, and we treat it as inedible. Um, another one I want to do is at some point foraging, like do not copy it, but what can I forage around here? Um, then another one I want to do is what's called the seven hour egg. I want to cook an egg for seven hours in like a slow cooker or something. And it changes to a totally different, weird texture, different than you'd expect. Um, I also want to do one about spicy foods, about the Scoville scale. Also want to do one, the, the edible peel one will probably include some flashbacks of me eating a bunch of lemons in a row with the peels. Cause yep, I have footage of that. Um, actually, next week's episode, there's probably going to be a good time for me to cut in footage of me eating an entire raw onion because I did that one. I did that twice because I did it to film it and then the camera died halfway through, but I still ate the onion because I didn't know. And I redid it to have it on film. And I don't even think I ever released it, but I did it twice. And I have one and a half of them on film. And eating an onion is hard, they're spicy. Although my cameraman had actually eaten an onion because she had gone to this thing called Shrek Fest where people uh, dress up like Shrek and eat onions. Um, so who knows? There are other onions out there, apparently. It's not just me. It's also the Shrek fans. Um, but uh, yeah, so next week you'll probably see me eat a whole raw onion in the episode, like sped up or something because it took me a minute. It took me like four or five minutes. Um, <laughs> whereas I ate three lemons with the peels in like a minute each. Um, so those are some snack breaks that will definitely be coming out at some point before too long, but I also want to just do other experiments with snacks. There's also probably going to be one once I grow my potato better, that's going to be how many ways can potatoes kill you? 
So let's think about it for a sec. Uh, potato guns, I need to build or buy one of those. Now, of course, I'm not recommending this. I'm going to be extremely cautious if I have a potato gun. I'm not pro-gun. I don't own a gun. If I have even a potato gun, I'll be extremely cautious with it. Uh, just to make a note, if I ever own a gun in the future, it would be something for video purposes or for if I thought that somehow I could hunt something I actually ate. I would not super not be into hunting unless I could eat it. Um, and I've even been a vegetarian for many years in the past. It'd be very hard for me to hunt something, but maybe good for meat eaters to have to do once in their life to catch what you eat. Um, or for video purposes, for science experiments. Those would be the only reasons I would ever own a gun, and it would be locked up in a safe extremely well. And it wouldn't be something I would get out to try and use for protection against an intruder, because that just makes it more likely you're going to die. Imagine an intruder comes in your house. They're just trying to rob you. They're not trying to kill you unless they have a gun pulled on them and then it's like fight or flight. So they don't protect safety. It's been proven. So I'm pretty anti-gun because people treat them like they're pro-safety and we need more gun restrictions. Theoretically, I can imagine owning one someday, but it would be entirely for science purposes or for trying to catch a food I could actually eat. It would not be for protection of any sort and it would be extremely well locked up. Um, just to note there, please don't buy any gun for protection. It's not going to help. The studies have proven it. I'm a mathematician. I read the studies. They're true. Um, now potatoes, you know, potato gun, it could even kill someone. So what I'm going to need to do is make a fake version of myself out of like, maybe I'll make like a rotisserie chicken to represent myself and shoot a rotisserie chicken with a potato gun to see how much damage it could cause. Or maybe like some bigger version of myself made out of things like rotisserie chickens and set up a fake version of me made out of food in a chair and then shoot it with a potato gun to see what it would do to me. And then, so apart from potato guns, potatoes have killed people historically when they go bad, both from even the smell. There was once a cellar of potatoes that rotted and the odor killed people from some weird thing. Um, and also from eating the green ones, people have died. When they go green on the inside and you eat it, some people caught a weird, I need to look into it more, but like a germ or virus or something from that, they got them. So potatoes can get you that way. But what about just potatoes in general? Uh, if you eat a raw potato that's not overgrown, you might get sick to your stomach, but you'd have to eat a lot of it to get poisoned. Uh, it's not something you can digest easily. It might hurt your stomach, but you'd have to eat probably more than one potato to have to go to the hospital, probably. Now, the thing is, potatoes are not the fruit of the plant. They are part of the root. They grow in the ground. Um, once again, I need to look up the correct scientific terms before I present this in an episode, but they are something related to the root because they are hanging out underground. They don't have the seed in them, so they're not the fruit. Potatoes do make a fruit, though. Pretty much any plant that is of that type is going to have the fruit somewhere. And the fruit of potato plants is apparently a small berry-like, maybe even botanically a berry, um, probably botanically a berry, um, little thing in the nightshade family, which tomatoes and eggplants and stuff are edible nightshades, but most nightshades are not edible. They're poisonous. So tomato, f uh, potato fruits look like little tomatoes, but they're poisonous. So someday we're going to grow potato fruits not to eat, to study. So... That'll definitely be a future snack break. How many ways could potatoes kill you? If anyone else can think of any other ways, leave them in the comments. Um, and yeah, I should dissect a rotten one. This one, once it gets, quote, rotten, before they rot, have you ever had a potato left out too long? They grow weird sprouts. This one's starting to. So they grow little alien things. So once it gets big enough alien things on these potatoes, I'm going to put them in the soil. And then we're going to see if the alien things emerge. Now, there are a lot of good ways to eat potatoes. Potatoes are pretty classic, you got to admit, because it's like if you kicked, if you didn't have potatoes, think about what you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have French fries, hash browns, baked potatoes, like home fry like things. You wouldn't have a bunch of dishes that incorporate it. You'd lose so much if you didn't have potatoes. They're kind of a staple of our modern diet. So, they're important, but if you eat it raw, you'll probably get a stomach ache. Uh, I'll probably try a bite of it in the episode. I don't know. Maybe not once it's grown the alien things. I need to look into that before I take a bite of it. I ate a bite of the raw pumpkin. That was pretty good. Tasted like a carrot. Um, so 
According to a comment, the potatoes, which are tubers, they say, uh, will root and hopefully fruit as well as root. So I don't know if my potato, just from being a potato, will make fruit or if you need a fruit to make another fruit. But I'm hoping, like this comment seems to be hinting at, that the potato itself has the potential to grow the fruits. Now, I'm also wondering if they bred that trait out, if they selective breeding over time, if they made it so it's harder conditions for it to make any fruit or so it never makes any fruit. Uh, Cause sometimes they breed things in a weird way where the fruit makes like one batch and you can't regrow it from that batch. Sometimes they do that to like copyright rice or something. And that's really messed up. That's just like a plague on our society, but there are, you know, also just uses for making potatoes better for diet and stuff. Um, someone's saying that, Potatoes are mainly propagated by vegetative methods and that from the nodes or eyes, which are what I'm nicknaming the alien bits, the new growth begins and that the sprouts will give rise to the new plants. That is cool. There are a lot of plants that just from a trimming of them, you can generate the whole plant. Pretty interesting. Now, one of my bigger botany goals, one of the snack breaks that I don't know which grade will end up in is to A, Visit one of those tree of many fruits that have many stone fruits grafted on the same tree. And then B, try and make my own. That's even better. I want to work with a grower. I have a young apricot tree. I want to add peaches. Then I want to add cherries, maybe even add almonds. You can add all sorts of stuff onto a stone fruit tree. So, and so whoever mentioned pineapples, those are kind of funny. Look up pineapples growing on a tree sometime. I'm going to look it up. So when you see pineapple tree, imagine a pineapple first. Imagine how you think it would connect to the tree. You think the plant bit, the leafy bit, would be the bit that connects to the tree, right? Wouldn't you imagine that the all the green stuff is where it connects? It's not. That's like a hat on the other end. The pineapple grows from the bottom and then makes that spiky green hat. Now, you can look up other ones that are funny, too, sometime. Asparagus is funny. It grows looking like asparagus coming out of the dirt. Like, it looks just like you put an asparagus growing out of the dirt. Like, it looks like as you pluck it and eat it. Then if you let them grow longer, they make these weird, wild tangles. One of my friends had a giant garden, and she didn't take care of the asparagus, and it made this wild bush. Um, so I do like botany and plants. I have so far, uh, I usually try and think of it in my main channel terms because that's my biggest goal. And so the episodes that come out bonus here are sort of when I'm already on the topic of studying or filming something for the main channel a lot of the time. And so usually it's like every fourth episode or something is a snack break. And then we get a few bonus videos out of it too. <clears throat> and that's sort of a routine I would like to fall into is like in the future as I incorporate more topics on the main channel sort of alternating between math things that are like more purish math that is one of my main interests and then alternating with more scientific things, some music theory lessons I'm going to teach and then some snack breaks. And they're not all going to say snack break in the title or description when it's that because that's not good for the algorithm. It's not very clickable. Snack break, uh, unfortunately, is not as clickable as something like cactus fire or whatever. Um, but uh, if the at the beginning of the episode, about a fifth of the time at the beginning of the episode, you'll hear me go, all right, we're not doing math, we're doing a snack break. And then those episodes are a little more chaotic, but they might also appeal to a wider range of viewers. One of my hopes from those is not just that I have fun making them, but also that maybe they will uh, trick someone else into learning a bunch of math by following my channel and then getting hit with a new math upload. So I kind of want to trick people into liking math because at first it'll be a trick and then they'll realize that they actually want to be tricked in that way and it's no longer a trick. They just like math. So I will make everyone love numbers. <laughs> and someone's saying, no, they're toxic. And yeah, that's the point is you can grow things you're not supposed to eat. I won't eat them. Potato fruit berries would be really cool to research though. So you know, I, I would love to have some poisonous things as long as I'm very careful around them. Um, and it should already be a lesson that someone should know if you come to the combo classroom and you see a weird plant growing, even if it looks like a tomato, don't take a bite, could be a potato fruit.
Ask me before you take a bite and I'll tell you which ones are edible. Now, I really want to hang some more plastic fruits from these trees because then I'll have a cherry tree, a banana tree, and then my loquat tree over there is actually a loquat tree. So then I can take people through like five stages of trick. They'll come back to the combo classroom, people who haven't seen it before, and then I'll be like, hey, look, it's my uh, banana tree. You want one? And I'll be eating a real banana. And then they'll try and pick one and it'll be plastic. And they'll be like, what? Wait, what are you eating then? And what is this? And then I'll offer them a loquat and they'll expect plastic and it'll be a real loquat. We'll take them through all stages of trip. So thank you all. And someone's saying a lesson could be good on which plants could be poisonous weapons. That could be good possibly, yeah. Um, we could derive some poisonous weapons ourselves. Um, not to use. Just for the science. Now, it is to be noted that although we just do it for the science, we won't get any intruders because everyone will be scared of what the combo classroom might contain. Anyone tries uh, intruding in the combo class, probably going to cut their foot on some glass and eat something poisonous by accident. So, helps us out there. I'm just joking. Everything is nice here. The combo class is a world of peace. And the combo class wants to just be loving and nice and so and supportive. So if we ever make a poison, you can rest assured that we will safely dispose of it after we research it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you to all the comments. Um, I love all of that. Um, and I think I answered most of the ones that I have time for right there. But we will do a little more glass cleanup. And this glass cleanup is going to be a little more messy and chaotic. So got to buckle your seatbelts here. I'll try not to get any cuts. But what we're going to do is transfer this one massive broken clock into our new broken glass center. And our new broken glass center is this. And so first we'll put our little shards we collected. And then, oh, whoa, there's some big shards left. So there's this shard. Now let's see what's going on here. There's this burnt part of the, this was part of the desk. It, well, no, it is part of the desk. Why do I keep saying was? This is another part of the desk. Um, and, okay, no glass right under there, but the big glass transfer is going to be a little messy. So here we got, A clock that this one basically was already broken and I had been storing it in that dirt spot on the planner. So there was like a broken clock hanging out in the dirt planner because I knew no one would cut themselves on there. I didn't want to have it just like on a chair or whatever. Then I was going to film with the dirt planner and add dirt. So I moved the broken clock onto the desk and then as I was like in the episode holding like five potatoes and five onions, I kept dropping on it and re-shattering it more and more because when it was already a little shattered, even an onion would fall on it and just like make more glass fly everywhere. So let's see if we can just like pour this glass out and still have a crack at all. Okay, we got to be careful on these edges. All right. Now, here's the thing. There's still some rather large glass shards right in the front. Let's see if we can break those off and then maybe still have this clock work somehow. Nah, that broke half of it off. That was worse than we started. Okay, this is still a really dangerous clock now. It has like two extra jacks. I'm just trying to get these extra glass bits off so it's less dangerous. Ah, never mind. This clock is just going to be really dangerous. Um, if you can see, we got a couple glass shards still lurking out there that I couldn't get off. So we'll leave it on the uh, glass collection pile. Unfortunately, that did generate more tiny bits of glass all around. Now... To any super fans who might be watching, you may know that when I'm already all the way over in this direction, there's a certain device I like to plug in sometimes. So although it might not 
be what some would consider helpful for my glass collecting mission. I think it'll be helpful if we have some bubbles in here. First, let's take a little peek if there's any more comments to go. Now, melting the glass down is a good idea. Now, the fire did melt some things in a weird way. You guys want to see the other things that were in the fire? Well, this is a weird chunk of something. This might have been like glue from the desk or something. I don't know what made this weird mutated part of it. This is part of the desk, though. And then there is this. This was in the fire. You guys remember this clock? <laughs> it had a little picture of a clock and it had a clock there. This one's been in a lot of combo class episodes. This one was there since the beginning. And I would say that still counts as a clock. What do you guys think? Still count? So uh, that happened. Now there's a little more bits of glass. So let's get the desk glass real quick. I also unfortunately left a good deck of playing cards out here because... The episode before was about factorials, and as some factorial fans may know, decks of cards are good analogies for them. Um, but I left a deck of cards out here, and now it's all over. Now it's 52-card pickup. What's that? Is that a little piece of glass? That's weird. Yeah, there's some weird little materials that got generated by the burning or something. Um, fire can do weird things. We'll do some more technical combustion someday. Maybe someday I'll have somebody who knows all about fire combustion just hanging out next to my clock fires and giving some more facts about it. Someone has a deck of cards in their hand, and why don't you give it a few good shuffles, set it into a position that has never been shuffled in history, which won't be too hard. And you'll know for sure that our actions are unique and that you just did something that never will be replicated in human times. So all of our actions are unique, partially because factorial permutations are hiding everywhere. So that's this week's main channel episode. Of course, I do have a lot more ideas bubbling up, so I should make more of them into shorts. The shorts are always fun for you guys. I know you like them. So I will just whip out some more of the fun mini facts I've found about things into some more shorts. It's a lot of fun ones that I got stacked. Unfortunately, the more I like a topic, the less likely it'll fit in a short because the more likely I've done enough research to find a main channel worth the episode of it. Um, so the shorts end up just being when I get time for them, but I have a lot of fun facts stacked up that I think could fit in a minute. So... I'll go back to that challenge again soon of a lot of days trying to see if I can condense one of my thoughts into a minute in a catchy enough way. Whole different challenge than making a whole episode. Whole different challenge than liking to live stream. But they're fun challenges. Um, all right, let's do the bubbles. And someone wants to know what factorials are. And as I do the bubbles, I will give you a little prerequisite peek of what they are. As a little clue of what our next episode will hold. And, yep, it was already set up. Don't worry. It's all good to go. So, unfortunately, it's I don't have a good extension cord for it, so it's not able to go too far. So, all the wind is putting them somewhere else. Hopefully, some will travel around here. Oh, yeah, they're starting to travel. Cool. So, factorials. How many orders could I put these three cards in? Well, if there's three spots they could end up in, this nine could end up in the first spot, the second spot, or the third spot. So there's three spots the nine could end up in if I order these cards. Now, you want to say there's three spots the three could be in then, but for each of those spots where the nine is, there's two options for where the three can be. If the nine's there, it could be either of these. Nine's there to be either of those. So there's wherever the nine is, which there's three options for, there's two places the three could be in reference. Then wherever the nine and the three are in those options together, there's only one place left for the king to land. Like if the nine's there and three's there, the king's there. 
the nine's there and the three's there, the king's there. So there's three places the nine could be times two places that the three could be there times one place the last card could be three times two times one. Is that a coincidence that three times two times one describes the way three things could be ordered? Well, why don't you get four items and see how many orders you can put them in and see if there's a correlation to one times two times three times four. So that's the little sneak preview of what we're going to be getting into then. Now, actually trying to figure out efficient ways for listing all the orders is another challenge. So if anyone wants any <coughs> challenge little homework to try on your own, what you can try is for something like ordering five things, what's an efficient way to go through and list them all? Warning, five things is a lot of orders. Now, the episode's fun because... Since factorials can show up in so many ways in our daily life, it's not just cards. I mean, cards I used as an example of 52 factorial, because that's how many cards are usually in it. But I had a lot of examples leading up to that. So the episode kind of explains it with three, gets kind of surreal from four through ten. So there's like cut scenes for each of the factorials. Um, and then we get some weird variations of factorials. And yes, everyone, I do also talk about what zero factorial is. Um, and that's going to be a fun one. Uh, it also is quite chaotic. There is also fire in that one. There's fire in both of the next two main channel episodes that were filmed. That one's fire is more because at the end, I lit a candle because it was getting dark. And well, you'll see. Um. Also in that episode, more of the desk broke. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the desk is really getting more and more haphazard. At this point, this whole armrest is broken off. This was a part of the desk. It wasn't, okay. Armrest is not its original purpose. That was when I turned the desk sideways. I would not even getting any of the bubbles. This sucks. Okay. All the bubbles are over there. I'm going to turn off the bubble machine for now because I need the extension cord for it to like be here or I need good wind. Oh, but there's so many bubbles right there. So the problem is that without good wind, they don't travel over here. They're all going that way. And whenever there's bad wind, I'm just waiting for them to travel, leaving the machine on and flooding other neighbors with bubbles. Okay, now we're getting a few of them a little closer. Let's see if we can look up close at any of them. Now, I can't do this forever because it's getting the uh, computer screen a little wet. I don't want to destroy my computer from bubbles. That would be uh, dumb if I, by investing in good bubble technology, then need to also invest in a new computer. <laughs> um, so we'll pause this fellow for a sec. And now I need to figure out where the heck to put this. Where the heck do I put all this broken glass stuff? Um, I don't know. Okay, it's going up on the compost bin for now, the broken glass center. Okay, folks. We have now collected most of the broken glass and put it on top of the planter. And if I find more glass, I have a good spot to put it. Unfortunately, this does mean we're going backwards in the clock quest. I'm supposed to be getting more clocks. I'm going backwards, so I'll go clock hunting soon. Um, and I don't think the neighbors do mind the bubbles. In fact, my neighbor who lives on that fence, one of the nearest ones, uh, just said hi the other day and said he watched some of the streams and he's a fan. So we've made an ally. And if my neighbor happens to watch this, thank you so much. You're cool. Um, also the neighbors who live on the other side of the fence are friends. I know them. They're chill. I've even filmed footage in their yard before. Um, but, uh, those neighbors, I don't really know. It's like a bigger apartment building. So when I flood that direction, it's just whoever's living in that apartment dish building, not exactly an apartment, but like a bunch of tenants in there. Um, 
Now, outside, and some people are saying it's snowy and windy there. I may take a snow trip. So we may go get some snow footage at some point because I really wanted to go to my friend's cabin to get back into nature for the first time in years because I had these surgeries. And uh, that was when I got COVID and we had to cancel the trip. So I may go back to my friend's cabin still, but it's going to be winter. So we may get some snow footage. In fact, a fun bit of snow footage from the past that was never released anywhere that I need to share is the time where me and a couple friends were up at that cabin and it was snowy season, but there was no snow right at the cabin. And we wanted to have a snowball fight because when we drove up like five or 10 minutes in the car, there was snow everywhere, just like barely up the mountain. And so we're like, oh, we want to have a snowball fight, but if we go up there and have a snowball fight, we're just going to be soaked and have to drive back right away and stuff. It would be way better to have a snowball fight on the grounds where the cabin is, then we can just go crazy with a snowball fight and then like go take a warm shower and put on pajamas or whatever. So what I, what I convinced my friends to do is get a cooler like that you normally put ice and drinks in and bring it up to this lake nearby. It was like a 20 minute drive where there was snow everywhere. And we were hanging out there anyway, but on the way out, I made them fill up the cooler with snow. And we brought back the cooler filled with snow and have dumped it on the ground. we had like one or two massive coolers worth and made this giant little snow uh, zone right outside the cabin and had a giant snowball fight, me and one of the friends. So, and that is on film. And was never released. Um, one of the first things I'm going to link to some of you guys is going to be just links to some of my channels that actually exist on YouTube still. And then uh, there's ones that I filmed for some of those channels that are like the craziest ones that never got released. Um, there's a lot of crazy ones I'm going to need to share someday. Um there's some episodes I couldn't release because I was like worried legally or worried about them getting banned from YouTube and stuff. So there's a lot of wild stuff to share. Um, and someone wants to know how to become a math wizard like me. I would say that my very brief recommendations is to read a lot, write a lot of notes about that. Try and re-encounter topics under different lights or the same question phrased from different fields and try and see the connections between when you learn one thing, what does that have to do with the other things you learned? And do a lot of playing around with numbers or shapes or whatever type of math you're into yourself. Read something, get inspired, and don't look up the answer right away. Try and figure out an answer, and you might find something that's never been discovered before, or you might just have a better, more intuitive way of understanding the thing that is known. So play around with stuff yourself, take a lot of notes, and read a lot. Read a lot of paper books. Also read a lot of online articles. Try and read really complicated proofs of stuff you have to understand. Also try and read simpler things like Wikipedia pages. So um, really a mix of that type of thing. And remember that don't emphasize memorization. Emphasize having a few tools in your toolkit memorized that are patterns of big scale things. Don't worry about memorizing small scale things. Um, so... Too much of school is trying to make people copy what a calculator does. We're not going to be as good as a calculator, so I don't really care if I'm fast at doing the quadratic formula or whatever. So you need to just know the underlying patterns and when to use what tools and simple rules and ideas for things. Um, and try to problem solve yourself as much as you can. There's even good websites. Uh, I don't, I've seen a lot of websites sponsored in other math YouTubers. I haven't really done the research. But there are like websites built around problem solving puzzles that would probably be really helpful if you're like more inclined to do video gamey stuff or more inclined to read through the screen. Um, anything that makes you try and solve some problems yourself. Um, but also just reading other people's things that ranging from easy stuff that you try and reread to hard stuff that you half understand um, and take notes about it all. So... Those are my preliminary things, but there will be a lot more I'll explain over time because one of the goals of combo class isn't just to teach, but to show other ways of teaching and other ways of approaching learning. So I do have big scale ideas about that, but 
there's a lot to say about each one. So I might make, you know, like an individual episode that, for example, is about why paper books are so important and why writing in a notebook can also be so important. And then I might separately have another about like why memorization isn't as important as patterns. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that'll creep into future episodes too. Maybe even sometimes as the theme of an episode as ways I think education could be done different. So um, take notes and someone says paper is everything. And I would even recommend probably even good to take notes, some digital and some on paper. On paper probably locks it in your brain a little better, but doing it different ways can help. The more different ways you can think about a problem helps. Um, and thank you to whoever um, left all these nice comments to all of you. Um, but yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, if people want to take more direct classes with me, that's going to be like a higher option on the Patreon I'm putting out in a week, but that might cost like 25 bucks or something to be in like the in-person in person digital, meaning like me in a small group on Zoom or whatever classes. Even for people who don't get that, don't worry, there will be a lot of more episodes of my ways to learn and my suggestions for teaching. Um, and hopefully by the time Combo Class expands to grade negative two and grade negative three, more and more people will be falling in love with the patterns that connect to different fields of math and even connect math to other forms of art and music and stuff and the combos. And hopefully people will also, like I said, be more into problem solving than memorization. And what, like I said, you do maybe want to memorize a few simple rules as tools in your toolkit, but you don't need to memorize 50 ways that that rule calculates this particular number and that particular number and that, you know, you're not going to beat your calculator on that part. You'll beat your calculator on problem solving. Um, I don't even use a calculator here much in the videos. I need to get a calculator out in this classroom. I mean, I can always pull one up online. If you need a good calculator online, the Wolfram Math World, or I guess the Wolfram Math World is good, like Wikipedia-like part of it. But the Wolfram Alpha main site calculator is a trustworthy calculator. And also, if you want to graph cool stuff, you can go to the site Desmos. And they have really cool graphing calculator software. So someday on a stream, I'll have you seeing my screen and we'll do some cool equations. But that's a fun game. Go to Desmos. Try plugging in like, okay, y equals 1 over x. That's kind of interesting. What about y equals... 1 over x plus x squared. What about y equals the sine of the cosine of x? Um, try random stuff, and some of them make cool spirals and patterns. Um, and a calculator wall that I will burn down, someone recommends. Now, I can imagine calculators being an iterated theme where there's a bunch of them in a future season. I already have my eyes on some future season symbols. It's still going to be clocks and dice and fire because those are very close to my heart. But there will start being like a billion of other things too. Uh, at some point, there will be a season with a lot of doors and keys. At some point, there will be a season with a lot of eyes. There's already some googly eyes, but there will be a lot of eyes. At some point, there will be a season related to a lot of mirrors. Although that's going to be harder not to have the cameraman in every shot. So some of those will become iterated along with the clocks and dice and stuff. Really, though, I just want to actually hit my goal of 400 whatever clocks that I got original comments on this promise I made. So really, that's my first my first two goals are to get 400 something clocks and to get three even in the dictionary. But maybe we'll have a calculator wall, too. Now, a whole nother story for another stream. It's one of the funniest stories from my life that I actually have the thing still somewhere in my attic. So I have this big old calculator that you plug into a wall, prints out paper like a receipt generator, but it was like used as like an adding machine for like finances back in the day or something like that. I don't know. It looks like a calculator, prints out this big receipt, only works when it's plugged in, is hyper massive and looks like a really simple calculator. It doesn't have many functions. It's like you can add stuff and multiply stuff. Now, why do I have that? Um, maybe because I stole it from my school in a strange heist in eighth grade. Uh, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> um, so I, I want to get the prop and find it in my attic and maybe film this like outside the school or something. But yes, there was maybe a middle school heist where I stole a calculator. And at first that was just a funny thing back in my brain. Like, oh yeah, in middle school, I decided to do a heist and steal a calculator. 
but now looking back at it, there's like nothing more combo class than that. I, I guess Demotro was cooking in my brain already back then. I guess combo class juice must have been flowing if I was doing stuff like trying to steal calculators. Now, of course, I don't promote stealing. Do not take that as a reference to copy. Stealing is bad. When I say I stole it from school, I mean it was in this crazy storeroom that they were never going to use it. Um, so do not steal stuff from people. That's mean and bad. Um, but they weren't going to use this, so I relocated it. Um, so someone's recommending calculators. I, I don't know. I got a graphing calculator that looks all fancy, and I couldn't even figure it out. So I still need to figure out the graphing calculator that someone gave me. Um, I'll mess around with that sometime. Like I said, I often use my computer as a calculator on one of those sites, Wolfram Alpha or Desmos. And um, I do want some calculators around here because they're cool. There probably are some over there. Like, I'm sure I have calculators around here somewhere. Like, here's a calculator. This is one of those ones with a solar panel. So I guess I do have one in the classroom. And there's the graphing one I couldn't figure out somewhere there. So, yeah, I've got a calculator here. What should we calculate? Why don't we do one of those Fibonacci? This isn't the main model I have. I have a better one somewhere, though. Back when I was in honors math classes, they made you buy the TI-84 or maybe the TI-84 plus or something like that. It was a calculator. And the thing costs like freaking 70 bucks or something. Like, I swear, it was more than 50 bucks to get one. And it was hard to find one used. And so I remember one year... I bought it and it's like 60 bucks or something. And then it either broke or I lost it or something. And then I like got one from Craigslist from someone for like 20 bucks in like a cafe or something. But you had to like hustle to get one of these calculators that were required for the class. Now that's something that I want to change too about education. Why do textbooks and colleges cost so much? Half of the reason why I didn't go to what a lot of people think are fancy colleges. I got into UC colleges and stuff. I didn't go to those. I went to city colleges. And like half the reason is because they cost so much money. Why is it that much money to learn? So let's change that. Ironically, I am asking for money on the Patreon soon, but that's to dedicate more of my time so I don't have to have a day job soon so I can make more free stuff. All I want is to make free education um, and weird art and stuff I like to make too. But my main goal with this is an artistic presentation of free education. So what we're going to calculate for fun real quick is going to be one of those Fibonacci-esque sequences. So I want uh, two of you to comment a number. Can include a simple decimal. Don't make the decimal crazy. Um, that is like, you know, somewhere between one and a hundred. So once we got 42 and what's the next one? Um, and we're going to play our Fibonacci game and see if after like five or 10 runs, we got 42 and 4.2 and 147.2. That one's a little bigger. We're going to, uh, sorry, Heat Shield. We're going with the first two with Bongo 50 and Zenko. We're going with 42 and 4.2. So 42. Wait, what the heck? Wait, 40. This is, I guess just the display is wrong. Can you guys see that? That's supposed to be a four, I guess. Um, so 42. Now, okay, the next display is wrong. It looks like it says negative two. That's what was throwing me off. I think that's a broken 42. Unless the button four makes it do a negative thing, I think the display just doesn't work. So that's not going to work because we're not going to know if it approached the golden ratio or not. Never mind. We already played that game in an earlier stream. Um, I'll get out the better calculators next time. Now, here's the thing. The combo classroom's a little bit of a mess, I'll admit. So the calculators are somewhere in this. See that pile? That is partial desk, partially whiteboard, Partially tarp, because when it rains, I had to tarp some stuff off. And partially a lot of random classroom supplies. In fact, let's play a little game. Let's play the game of what weird supplies did I put in the bag that I didn't want to get rained on a few weeks ago. And someone says, do I need them to send me a calculator? If anyone wants to send me something, it should probably be a clock or a bunch of dice. But I could use a calculator, sure. If anyone wants to send me something, they can email me with the contact link on my page. Um, let's play a little game here. Now, there's 
other boxes worth of stuff that we can play this game other days too, or after this too. But here's a bag of stuff that I said a few weeks ago. Let's put it in here to not get it rained on. And let's see what weird classroom supplies you may have never seen yet. Well, this one I should really be wearing in more episodes. <laughs> this is safety goggles. I always forget to wear these when I'm doing something unsafe. But, yeah. If I wear these, then, you know, flying glass shards and fire will be less likely to get in any eyes. So... We um, also got the calculator I was talking about. So uh, when one of my old neighbors, one of the people who share the garden with me, they often cycle out because it's a rented house. One of the old ones who we got along with well when they were moving out, they were like, you do weird math videos, right? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you want a calculator? And I'm like, sure. So uh, this is a good one. This is like an actual graphing calculator. But I couldn't figure out how to work it. It's really confusing. I'm going to need to sit down. I mean, I only spent like five minutes and then I was like, I'll do this later. But I'm going to need to spend like 20 minutes sitting down with this thing to figure it out. Um, these are expensive. Cool. Well, thank you to my old neighbor. He was a very nice, cool guy. I hope his job is going well. Had to move to do a job somewhere else. Um, yeah, why are calculators so expensive? It's because they have a lock on the market. You know, it's... If the calculator brands all decide to be expensive, what are you going to do? Not many other brands make calculators, so you got to go with the calculator brands. Someone's wondering if I'm on Discord or Twitter. I don't have a Twitter. I think I took the name Combo Class for a Twitter handle at one point. I don't even know if it went inactive because I've never posted on it. Luckily, I never decided to be too big on Twitter because I think I dodged a pretty big storm with that one. Uh I know that there's some chaos going on there right now. So uh, me not having had Twitter be one of my main plans for growth, I'm feeling pretty good about right now. But I do have the Combo Class Discord. Now, if anyone really wants to like help me out in a serious way, then email me on the contact link on this page. However, if you just want to chat about stuff, we are having some cool chats in the Discord. Let me pull up that link right here. We got some good combo class links in one of the last streams that I'll pop into this description as well. Um, let's see. Is this the one that had it? Yeah. So here we got some links. There's also a subreddit that I want you guys to consider posting some more thoughts or dumb memes on because we need to put some more fun stuff on there. I use actually Reddit more than Discord, not in terms of the combo class stuff. I check both of them, but in terms of what apps I use day to day. The Discord I only use for the combo class stuff. I actually would prefer if the Reddit grows too, because that's an app I actually use day to day. But here are the links. Um, so there we go. Hopefully those work. Um, but yeah, good thing I dodged the Twitter stuff going on, huh? So it's gone down a whole rabbit hole. At first it's like, okay, we're going to rebuy this company so that there's going to be free speech. And then the guy who rebought the company gets really offended by certain posts. So now it's kind of a landscape of uh, if you offend the guy, then you're you're not allowed. But if if you're not noticed or don't offend the guy, you could post anything. And apparently right now people are posting like full movies and crazy stuff on there. That's just like, it's an unmoderated insanity scape apparently. Now I'm sure parts of it are normal and civil, but eh, in any case, I'm glad that was never one of my main ones. Now I do also, I've never linked this with you guys, but I do have like my own Instagram and Facebook that I barely ever post on, but that I have at points in my life that is for like not combo class that were personal ones so someday maybe for the super fans maybe i'll link like my instagram and stuff on there too um someone says they like the math memes subreddit yeah i've seen that one sometimes and it's funny that one definitely has some good jokes on it um now yeah i think i gotta log off pretty soon but let's go through this bag because i'm sure the calculator and the glasses weren't the only fun surprises in here so first we have some paper that I was using to help start a fire. That's trash-like stuff. Okay, we got cool stuff in here. Got another deck of cards. So who cares that my other deck of cards is there? 
Got another deck of cards. Now, I won't open it yet. It's kind of uh, some card tricks that I invented are fun to do with a fresh deck of cards because they can surprise people more when it's fresh. Um, rubber bands. So, see, I, I, I like stocking classroom supplies that I just know will come in handy for some episode someday. And that's what I'm going to spend any money I get from combo class on. It's just more weird stuff in bulk that I know someday will make a good episode. So... And uh, to the comment asking about the worms, yeah, you can go back in the stream if you want to check that, but I couldn't find many. I found a couple isopods, so there wasn't much lurking in there, but we got a little bit of isopod footage if you scroll back in the stream. Go rewatch it after. Uh, and as a reminder, when people rewatch the streams, the chat replay takes a while to process and go there, which is annoying. But you, if you rewatch it in the first day, you just get the video. If you rewatch the streams like a day later, the chat replay is also there. Now... This is a water gun. I got this at the dollar store. I was like, $1 for this size of water gun? I'll go for it. So I haven't tried this one out yet, but that might be a good way to uh, try putting out a fire as long as I also have the hose ready. Um, this one's good. This is some spray paint. I use this to spray paint a giant nine on the side of the house for my episode about weird tricks with the number nine. Although now, you know, nine... Since it's really credit of the number B minus one for whatever base we count in that had a lot of the tricks in that episode, I'm going to start thinking of the nine I spray painted on the wall as an upside down six. Because six is honestly a better number if you're not talking base 10. Nine's cool, but six is super cool. So I have an upside down six on my wall uh, that we spray painted with this. And if, you, if we ever have an equation we think is really important, we'll spray paint it on the wall. Um, here we got some gloves, and I really should have looked in this box before I touched all the glass. That's pretty dumb timing that I just touched a bunch of glass and then pulled out some gloves in that order. Um, but these are gloves, so if I pick up more glass, I'm set. What else do we have here? A lot of weird stuff. Paint. Might need paint sometime. You never know. More little bubble things where you can blow the bubble. If a bunch of people just want to be blowing their own bubbles, these have like the little stems in them, I think. Is it or is this just fluid? I don't know. Um, this is something bubble related. I got some dollar store sunglasses that light up, but you can't really see right now. Maybe if it was dark out, you'd see that. I got more water guns that were at the dollar store. I have these weird balls that you soak with water and throw at stuff. I have more googly eyes. I should leave these out. Googly eyes should go more places because it has big ones. This is a massive googly eyes. The biggest googly eye I've ever seen. Let's open this container. Now, the dollar store has always been my friend. I got a lot of this stuff from the dollar store. And not like saying one dollar store in particular, although the one near me does have a surprisingly cool ceiling. I'm not kidding. There's like a really cool cathedral ceiling. But... Um, the dollar stores in general is a good concept. Uh, thing being a dollar nowadays is rare. And when you go to a dollar store, there's a lot of stuff that's a dollar. So you can get your cheap googly eyes, you can get your cheap cards, you can get your rubber bands. So a lot of this stuff's from the dollar store, but it's going to come in handy. Now, there's some googly eyes. And what that means is that if anybody even just uh, signs up like on my Patreon for like two bucks a month, that even after the fees, I'll get to buy like something along these lines per person per month. Um, of course, the other stuff that will be more technology, be more money is like giant bubble technology and 50 clocks and stuff. Now, here's the actual calculator that I've used in a video or two. In fact, this calculator is uh, in the two most viewed combo class videos online are the same video views on YouTube shorts and views on TikTok. If you add up all the videos on both apps and look at views, the top two most viewed are the same video on each of those apps. Me messing around with this calculator and talking about dividing by zero for 60 seconds is at like practically 5 million views here, either that or close to it. And at more than 3 million views on TikTok, that's like a huge part of why my channel has gotten this many subscribers is me using this calculator to talk about dividing by zero. So this guy's pretty notable. 
I also like it. It's a good like medium strength. Like you can do cool stuff on. It's not gonna make a crazy graph for you, but it, you know it has the, enough buttons to do all the functions you're probably gonna want. So where's the back of it though? It has like a thing to tuck in. So whatever. We got half the the import, important half of the calculator, and we got more paint. Now this is good. We got a Rubik's cube. I didn't know all this stuff was in this bag. So here we got a cube. It's a little rusty-ish. So what we'll do right now while we chat is talk a little bit about how you can mess with a Rubik's Cube. This is a little tangent. If you want to try one for yourself for fun and you don't know the algorithm, probably not going to get the whole cube, even if you're really smart, unless you spend like a year on it. Really hard to get the whole cube without algorithms. It would be a really good challenge to try to it. Really good for your brain. But I resorted to algorithms like almost everyone does to learn how to do the cube. However, if you want a challenge on this, you can try and build the first layer. And that doesn't just mean making one face all the same color, but it means that also these blocks are completely in place, each cube on the top layer. And that means that for each center color, you need these three to be the same as the center color on each side. So you're making a flat one of one color, but you also need these little T-like things to actually have solved the first layer. So that's something that you don't need an algorithm for. You can kind of just use critical thinking. Say I want orange. Well, we're off to a good start. We have these two blues in a row. So let's start by lining up blue there. And now blue, it, these two are in the right spot. The cubes are completely right because they're on their orange we want. And blue is the center there. On this side, white's the center. And that's good too. So these four are correctly set in the top layer. How do we get the rest of them? Well, first let's deal with some corners. Right here I got uh, orange, yellow, green. I don't remember the maximal way to do this. I forget all the algorithms, but this is the part of the cube that we can just figure out, you know? So don't trust me on this being the fastest way to do it. I'm just kind of puzzling through it. Now, if this is orange, yellow, green, I'm gonna want that to be living here because that's the yellow, green, orange. The centers are kind of what tells you about the thing. So we got yellow, orange, green. So I want him to go there at a certain spot. So I'm going to move him there. Moving the bottom doesn't mess up my orange at all. Now I got to try and tuck him into there. So we're going to shift this down so he can hop over and then we're going to shift it back. And now we got our corner ready. Now let's try and get another corner right there. This corner we need to move. Let's try and put it down and remove it and put that back. We got the corner somewhere else because it wasn't in the right spot. So now we're gonna put the orange with orange, green, white. That wants to be there. So I'm gonna go doop, 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 yeah, doop, doop. And we got that where it wants to be because we have white and green. Oh, and yeah, we still need that center bit to get fixed in a minute. Let's do the last corner first. That's living right there. Now the orange is on this side. So often I was sliding this way and hopping it, but this time we can see the hop could send it there if I turn this and put it in there and then turn it back. And now I've gotten that whole bit. We have this whole arrow solved on top. Now let's put in some of the others. I need to get that guy in somewhere. So first let's put him so he's not in the middle. And wait, how should we get him there? How does that work? Now he needs to be, this is gonna be hard. I need to move him out, I guess. Hmm. How do I get him out without him? So now I need to think for a second. First, we can put this one in. So this is yellow orange. And we want him to be on the yellow orange guy. So we're going to just like sneak him in there and put that back. So we've gotten that. And now I just need to get this guy there somehow. So that looks a little harder because I'm going to need to like maybe lose this guy. Maybe I should have done the sides before the corners. I forget the maximal way. We're proving right now basically just that the first layer you can do just by messing around and problem solving. Now here we got one more step. He's a little too low to hop up immediately, so we have to zoop it all the way over there and then zoop it into there. And now we've gotten what's called the first layer solved because not just the orange, but these three line up with the color on each side. Now the next step is going to be to get these on the second layer, and that's where you might need an algorithm where it would take you a really long time to figure out how to get them in there without messing up the first layer. So if you don't have an algorithm, this is probably how far you're gonna get, but it's a good challenge for your brain. Two by two cubes are also good because you can get to the first layer 
is almost all the cube. I mean, yeah, if you have the first, it's hard to even describe what the first layer is in the same way as this, but in the two by two cube, essentially, you could fiddle around with it and crack it yourself within a day. Um, we have more cards as well. Now, I guess I'll just leave this Rubik's Cube out. It'll be an addition to our table. And also found another glass shard. I'll put that in our clock zone. Now, what do we have here? I don't know if this will still work, but we have Silly String. So you guys know Silly String? You like spray it and it goes everywhere and it makes a huge mess, but it's fun. Well, I used to love this as a kid. Remember requesting at parties like to my parents, like, can we have a Silly String fight? And they'd be like, fine, because it takes so much cleanup. Um, but uh, with this, um, I can see if it still works in a fun episode. We can try and spray some Silly String. And there's an even larger, crazier one that I'm not seeing in here that isn't another one that I got as one of the 2 or $3 items at the dollar store. They do sometimes have multi-dollar items. And it was 2 or 3 but I think it might have been 3 But I have a confession confetti cannon thing it's like this big barrel that you're supposed to squeeze and it shoots out confetti or something and i'm kind of scared of it and that i'm really going to need to bust out in one of these episodes or streams so we also have darts so if we ever need to try and see if anything sticks in anything good we can uh they have these tips for protection on them, I guess. How do I get this tip off? Is it supposed to have this plastic bit? That won't let it dart. Okay, there. So, yeah. If we ever need a test if anything sinks into something, then we can throw a dart at it. it didn't sink in the wall that time. May have potential to next time. So, darts may come in handy. In fact, maybe I should draw a uh, dartboard on a clock. One of the clocks that's like all paper and the glass shattered in front. Maybe we can draw a dartboard on it. Now, there's also a lot of leaves and teaching blocks and random stuff in here. A um, lot more random things. We got some dollar store rings, card tricks, lighters. Ooh, we got some more dodecahedral and icosahedral dice. Those are going to be good to put back on the carpet. We also have one of the dice that has uh, seemingly been through an incident. Um, so those get to go back onto the ground. You're free, you're free, you're free. This is where all of my tetrahedral dice and stuff were. Not all of them, but some. Ooh, this was a cool gift from my friends. So me and my friends play these games of marbles where it's not the normal type of marbles you may have heard of back in the day in the circle. We invented our own type of marble game, and it's really fun. Uh, might sound old-fashioned and weird, but playing marbles is dope if you invent your own rules for, like, flicking them and killing the enemies and stuff. And since I'm super into cartoons and one of my heroes, who I aspire to someday be like, is Bugs Bunny. Um, and I love Looney Tunes in general. My friend gave me marbles with all the Looney Tunes characters on them. So check it out. We got marbles with Looney Tunes characters on them. So that's pretty cool. Um, someone's asking if I'm planning to stream often. I have been streaming pretty often. I'm planning on at some point setting a schedule for three or four days a week. But right now I just do it three or four days a week randomly. So uh, sometimes I try and announce it an hour or two early on the channel. So if you like take a peek at the channel every once in a while, you might see an upcoming stream. I'm going to try and maybe start announcing them like the day before. And then if you check the channel once a day, you'll know when the streams are. But right now it's a little chaotic. I have a lot I have to work on to make combo class work right now. I'm juggling a lot of operations myself because I'm still working on building a team. So it's kind of like if I have a bunch of editing, I'm not going to stream. If I have private students, I'm not going to stream. When I can, I like to stream. Um, someone's saying, why don't I put them in a drawer inside? I don't have much room inside. I have more room out here. My room is pretty tiny in there. And like my, I can put some stuff in my family's zone, but I'm not going to like put 5,000 canisters of silly string and marbles in the living room. My room's pretty small in there. So I have much more room out here. It's also more accessible when I'm filming to just have it here. And a tarp did the trick. So when it rained, I just put them all in bags like this, put a tarp over it, and they were good. Um, 
Now, what else do we got? Another bubble blown thing. This is nothing compared to the bubble technology I have now. I was a practically foolish younger man buying all these dollar store bubbles, thinking these would even come close to a bubble machine that I would have. Didn't I? Well, I imagine someday I'd probably have a bubble machine, but I didn't know it would be this year. We also got some more silly string, and we uh, there's like a bunch of markers and random junk in there. Oh, there's uh, some little yo-yos. There's like miniature yo-yos. So I actually, you know how I said I go through weird phases where I like for two weeks out of a year, I'll be really into card tricks, and then two weeks out of the year, I'll be really into this or that. Well, I've only once in my life, but maybe it'll come back when I was like nine or something had a yo-yo phase where for like two weeks, uh, not on this size, on the normal size, where for like two weeks, I was trying to learn all the tricks. So yeah, these little ones don't bounce upward as well, but yo-yos are fun, you know? So maybe I'll hang these in the background or something. So that's most of the contents of this box. Um, remember folks, have a lot of love in your heart. This ring doesn't fit on my finger. The dollar store rings are tiny for some reason. I guess they assume kids only are going to want them. Come on, dollar store. It's just say an adult doesn't want this ring. But they only fit on like the top half of the pinky. They can't go any lower or on any other finger. So I can wear one on each pinky at a time. Sometimes I'll show up to a party with one on each pinky. But uh, <laughs> you can't put them on all the fingers. There are rings in the factorial episode coming up because how many ways you could order rings on your fingers could really the fact. Oh no. Okay. There's googly eyes everywhere. Uh, I think I can get most of them back in the bag. Um, now these googly eyes really range in size. Look, they got tiny ones too. This is a good googly eye pack. Normally you, you get them all in like one of these sizes of eye. But we got those, we got little ones, and we got this big one. Look at that. I need to figure out a special place to put that one. That thing's bigger than my eye. Um, someone's saying slinkies are more cool than yo-yos. I think that they are, yeah, probably. Slinkies are really cool. I don't have one in this bag. They're tied. Slinkies and yo-yos are tied. They're both cool. Uh, they both have similar physics where they can do like slightly surprising movements based on uh, them having energy somewhere in them. But a slinky down a step of stairs is quite a magical phenomenon. Trust me. Although I don't know if I have any slinkies out here in this bag, I literally might have one in the other bag. And if I don't, there's one somewhere inside. Because trust me, as a kid, I played with a lot of slinkies. Um any of those old fashioned toys you mentioned, I was probably into. So I'm not much like a video gamer or stuff. I like old fashioned stuff for some reason. It's like being in the world and putting googly eyes on stuff. Now we got a lot of supplies to incorporate in future episodes here now. Oh, nice. Another pack of the googly eyes. So now this one I can leave closed and it does have another massive one. So yeah, we're gonna put googly eyes everywhere here. Um, whenever I'm here, I've been saving my energy for filming and not decorating, but sometime I'm just going to be hanging out with friends here and I'm just going to be like, all right, I'll give you two bucks. If you put up 50 googly eyes everywhere, we'll get them up here. Um, got some more cards as well. So I will bust out some of my card tricks for you guys someday. For now, I am going to cut off the stream soon. If anyone's listening and has any other favorite toys they like, they can mention it. I will certainly think about incorporating toys like that in future videos. I can definitely imagine there being a Slinky episode someday. Um, so those are great. Um, I had someone suggesting some fun things. And thank you all. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like half the comments, I half answer in the ranting I'm doing while you're leaving the comment when I don't look at the comments, but I like tuning into them once in a while and seeing your opinions. So thank you all so much. We're going to wrap up pretty soon. We'll do a last little glass inspection. Um, I'm just going to put this stuff back in the bag. This bag is working pretty well. Um, and we're going to put on gloves for our last glass inspection. I guess they haven't been used. They're tied together by a little string. Oh, I hate these things. Okay. You know what my enemy is? I don't have many enemies. I try and appreciate things in life. 
But once in a while, there's a thing that you just have this feeling in your head that you're like, I'm never going to appreciate this. I'm at war with this. And this is one of those for me. I hate these things. These things suck. So, um, and if combo class is against something, that means war. Because combo class is very loving of most things. But little plastic things that you need scissors to cut that are get in the way of your stuff because they're trying to make a product harder to access so they won't get robbed or something bad. They could have connected these together a different way. This wasn't to not get robbed. This one was to uh, attach them together in a cheap way. I know I buy a lot of plastic with my Dyson stuff, but I keep it here. I don't litter the plastic. And these also contribute to a lot of litter. So these things are bad. Remember that despite all of my plastic buying, it's just to have a surreal education set and have more math tools. But buying plastic isn't really a good thing in general. If you don't have a good use for it, plastic's bad. So, I mean, plastic's good for making Dyson clocks, but I hate these little things. I'm trying to get this off without needing scissors, and it's taking an insane effort. So, um, I should wear the... Okay, fine. Oh, okay. Okay, we're so close. This is, like, half ruining the gloves, too. I mean, they're going to work fine, but it, like, makes little holes in them whenever you have this thing. These things are evil. Um... Okay, I don't know how to get it out. We're just going to... Okay, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Come on. Oh, now the other part's stuck in there. Oh, my God. I didn't have any scissors out here. If I had scissors, maybe I have a knife out here. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, whatever. I give up. I'm going to have it in there. It's going to feel bad on my hands. So, and yeah, the full force rip it out sometimes works, but I've hurt my fingers on them before when I full force rip them out. And I hurt my teeth on them before when I full force rip them out. So, um, doesn't always work. Um, maybe use some broken glass as a cutter. That's a good idea, but that sounds risky. I'm trying to use the gloves to touch the glass. So it's ironic that I need the glass to use the gloves. It's kind of like when you get scissors and have you ever bought scissors that are connected by something you need scissors to cut? It's like, are you joking? You're not going to let me use the product unless I already have one of it. So um, now we got gloves. We can do a little more efficient glass hunting and we're going to wrap up the stream after that. I should also probably collect the dart that I just threw back there. Um, where'd that even go? ricocheted somewhere weird okay we're leaving the dart back there for now um now let's try and see if there's any last shards here we actually have a new thing in the classroom as well which is this bread box i got a broken bread box from someone so works well enough although it's kind of broken so if we ever have any cool secrets to unveil mid-episode we can be like, so um, it is broken. I'm probably breaking it more as we speak, but I'm looking for glass under it. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, okay, there are shards. Yeah, so here we're getting to the little shards that are harder to pick up with um, gloves, but are better to pick up with gloves, although harder, because the little shards can be the ones that get you. You can dodge the big shards. You can try and pick up a little one, and it gets finicky in your fingers, and it tricks you. So there we go. Okay, I'm really going to need to do a more thorough inspection off stream because I'm finding a lot of tiny ones. Uh, the problem with the tiny ones is they shatter widespread, too. If you drop something glass, the big ones you collect in, like, the first three seconds, and then the tiny ones take you like an hour of like using all sorts of technology and brooms and vacuums to know that you actually got all the micro shards. So this is going to be boring if I actually do like an intense inspection for glass. So I need to do some lessons in a bit 
anyway today and then work on editing my factorial episode. So I'm going to cut off the stream right now. Remember everyone to make sure to leave comments on the main channel videos if you want to help and that our Patreon is launching pretty soon in December. So you'll be able to sign up if you want to help the channel and get bonus videos or if you want to pay more money and get some lessons with me in a small group. And I love you all. Let me toss this glass in the clock before I wrap off. And in the last episode, just by the way, there's some such good glass breaking sound effects. If anyone is a producer and wants to put glass breaking sound effects in their songs, I give you permission to use it from the episodes where you can take my glass shattering sounds and use them as long as you mention the credit somewhere. Um, and there are good ass glass breaking sounds. Those things like you got to hear these things. I, those are like practically my favorite part of when something breaks is just that clean shattering noise. So thank you all so much. Stay tuned for all the stuff I mentioned, like our factorial episode and our Patreon options. I love you all so much. I imagine the next stream will just be in a day or two, probably. And like I said, I'll try and churn out some more short videos too. In the meantime, think about ways that factorials may inhibit or inhabit not inhibit, inhabit your life. Uh, think about, for example, what things do you know you're going to do one of, but you're not sure the order you're going to do them? Wearing some shirts you washed for laundry, eating a few pieces of candy. What things are you going to do one of each, but you're not sure what order? And those things may show up even in the factorial episode, because I give a bunch of cutscenes as examples. Um, but those things have factorials hidden in them. And once you get past five or six things, those factorials get massive. So, um, love you all so much. Um, I didn't look through the comments super recently, so if you left any nice comments or questions, I'll check those after. But you all are so awesome. Thank you, my combo lords. Have a nice day. And I'll catch you in another video soon.